Well, it's the uh, first night for uh, about 11 sets I made with poor old pockets on this stretch of uh, river. First two sets come up empty on these, but the first result, nice little muskrat down there. We got a trap about right there where the light shine about so that's probably about a foot almost a foot back but a little bit deeper muskrat but it's more playing on coon here but it's fur all right uh got a portable pocket set here checking tracks before work trap again about where that spotlight is that way, first step into the water, that's where I've got him. And there's the coon shitting right there, getting wet. Don't easily like the wet raccoons, but I'll take him. One of the common themes that I have when I'm running my traps, especially on a water line, is I'm looking to kind of make a combination blind set with any kind of lured set or baited set that I do. Uh, one that kind of allows me if the animal doesn't care about the lure or bait that I'm using, not attracted, or I miss him coming out of the hole, I've still got four chances to get him in my four chances for him to hit the trap by the way on, the, on his way by where I've got this set right now it's kind of on a slide where this uh, tree's falling down and there's a trail that goes these trails are always hard to follow through the water but they're always, with the cumin, they're always hard to follow, but tree, it, the trail goes up along this tree root and it kind of follows down because this log, a lot of coon droppings on this log that kind of goes halfway out to the river. And then there's not really a whole lot on the other side other than there is another log that has a lot of droppings over there. I've got another po portable pocket which I'm using right here the, the trap can't see in the mud but it's right here so a muskrat or a coon coming down the slide right here and coming in he'll hit he can hit this trap right here with a foot the way I got it bedded I got it down below the, the level of the mud so that just went a muskrat swimming across it isn't gonna bump it with his nose or whatever and not get caught. So, slightly d below the level of the mud right there. But, but uh, yeah, I just got a purple pocket, just got a little homemade uh, fish and cat food feed mixed bait, and uh, some uh, menhaden oil. But, yeah, I had some good luck on this set. It's gonna get to, it's good, we're coming off a real cold spell. I just gotta get up to the 50s and 60s this weekend during the day, so I'm hoping that I get these coon moving. It's, last week was a pretty slow week, only got 18, so we'll see what we do. Oh, uh, this is the second day at, of this little line. Uh, <laughs> a pretty nice size coon portable pocket. This, where I had the trail going up. Bub, but uh, temperature got up to uh, 60 degrees yesterday. Uh, first night, it stayed in the teen, so they didn't move. Didn't see any sign, but uh, said, see my portable pocket right there. He's got it turned around. He went in this without him coming at me. Yeah, he's coming at me. I'll stay that there. You see? Alright. 
get him taken care of. Again, we're talking about Travers Luck. Uh, this is uh, Tuesday, just before Thanksgiving. I'm going out of town for Thanksgiving tomorrow, so I'm pulling most of my traps. I'm going to leave a couple, uh, about a dozen calm bears on another farm going till, uh, uh for tomorrow. And, uh, we had, had a cold spell going on for a while, then we had this big, uh, had a pretty good warm up and got this coon. He's kind of, he's been hiding from me. He hasn't moved since I come down here, but I'm going to come see him here. That is, that's going to be a pretty good sized coon. He's kind of one of the WS uh, one and a half coils. Looks like a guy by the back foot, but a uh, guy in a portable pocket. I had it. Turn around, brought right there, and uh, there's a little slide right here. I had a slide cleaned out. I had a trap right here that way. Any muskrats, which I was kind of hoping for, because the way coon prices have been, muskrats have been up, and they're a lot easier to skin. So if muskrats weren't in there's pocket, they could still go up and slide and get hit in the trap. But uh, pulling this shot today, and the shed got a pretty nice coon. Well, <laughs> it's uh, a couple of days after Christmas. I set uh, some coyote traps out here uh, uh, Saturday. And coming up here and take a look. Uh, coyote, it's, uh, unfortunately, that thing, it, she's, uh, rubbed all to pieces. It's like a young one, but had a poor little pocket. Got him right here. Had the trap right here, kind of between the two fresh grass, kind of like a walkthrough set. So, but, uh, first coyote of the year. And she's an ugly one, but that's just our typical cut, uh, Ohio coyotes. Last cut check on the, this section of the creek. Got a, got a portable pocket here. Uh, early, well I set these traps, uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yeah, we, we were coming off a, uh, high wire period, which, we're just going back into one right now, and these kind of little high points up and down the creek have kind of turned into uh, turned into toilets for the muskrats when the water's high. And of course, also a spot to get dry to dry off because all the uh, all the dens are flooded out, and they can't go up into the fields because there's nothing there so they can be picked off by all the out all the hawks or owls running around here but yeah I got a portable pocket here had it made with the uh, fish and some muskrat glam lore and let's see we've got little Mr. Muskrat here I think this is the second muskrat I caught out of this set and uh caught a coon out of here earlier, that's why this area is cut all chewed up, so I had a coon in here, and a coon on these long, uh, kind of a long chain, they just go in and tear everything up, but, uh, not quite as big as the last rat, but, still pretty decent, always pull that up a little bit, I think most of the lure is kind of gone, but, I'm gonna pull these traps in a couple of days. Uh, uh, a 
little muskrat. He wants to get... Uh, trap back a little bit on this shit. Just kind of kind of let him walk. Just kind of flat through there. If it wasn't so high, it'd be easier to show up on the camera. But this water level's up by about five inches from where it normally is right now. Yeah, two muskrats on this creek. Not too bad, but I've pretty well got the ones I'm gonna catch. So these guys are about ready to get pulled. Now we're out here. We shot a few more traps yesterday and shot four of these portable pockets. This is the only one that's connected today. I kind of first got here trying to look to see. I knew this set looked a little odd because my portable pocket was facing downstream and kind of saw where the chain was heading to. I'm not exactly sure what it. What the coon's done over here, but uh, he's waiting on me. I got a full, I got an edit bit of editing out the house, but uh, said you can't, the picture really can't uh, do the how steep the bank yard justice. Yeah, it all kind of looks flat and in, but. about right on the edge of the drop-off here, but... Get that side rod and brake tight. Try to put a little bit of tension on it. Now, a lot of people tell you, you gotta have that for a back foot catch, you gotta have that trap elbow length away from the bank. But uh, these beaver aren't they're walking on all fours, they're gonna come up and stand with the back foot to get up to where I'm gonna put this pocket. I'm gonna have the pocket set. This gotta be right here. If they wanna look at it, they gotta climb up with their back foot and get into there. Yeah, that, that trap's only about four foot underwater, but most of the time I set the trap like this, we're going to be caught by the back foot about eight out of ten times. Put a little bob game in a ten mile lure and put a little, well, I don't have my fist lure, but That's all it really takes to do these pockets yet. Alright, cut it off.